Hey guys, it's 21 Maxwell here, and welcome to another edition of the Evolution Will Be Televised, our TW save in 2003. Monday Night Raw is upon us, we are now three weeks away from No Way Out, and then on the road to WrestleMania. So I'm hoping again for another good show here. As we hit Mania season, obviously, in the last episode, if you missed it, on SmackDown, we've got the likes of The Undertaker coming back. As I say, the last couple of episodes, he's been back, so that's good. So we're going to get more of our bigger names back as we head into WrestleMania season. Then we need to decide what the best WrestleMania card is, and then we need to decide what is the best avenue going forward. Do you persist in the superstars that carried us through the Attitude Era, or per real life, do they leave in this save? I don't actually know, I've never used the mod, so they might. And should we be forced to then push younger talent? So, we'll see what happens, but I hope you enjoy the show regardless. I say a few storylines building up to no way out. Cheers, and let's go. So it's sold out 15,000 at the American Airlines Arena in... Miami, Florida, and Evolution are just basically in the ring to start with, just basically bragging about how oh, Scott Steiner has had multiple opportunities and has yet to you know, defeat Triple H. He's still the champion. Who reigns on the parade but a returning Stone Cold Steve Austin? He just comes in, raises a bit of hell, and just properly winds up Evolution. What I found interesting with Austin is the save has him down as an occasional wrestler, but his contract stipulates not he can't be less than a, than a main eventer. So, yeah, push him as a main eventer. As far as I'm aware, Austin is going to be a permanent fixture in the main event until otherwise. So, with us, it was a B81, so a good segment for Evolution to be a part of, and especially the development of Batista and Orton. Triple H and Ric Flair improvised well, as did Batista. Randy Orton did struggle. Um, all these my, all these kind of segments need to be unscripted because Ric Flair just moans and it's it does hamper the promo in my opinion as some people are scripted and one person is not. But regardless, as always, we get the straw off to a strong start. We get the crowd hotter. Triple H looks good. Austin looks excellent, and Randy Orton looked dreadful. The Steiner goes after the storyline, and where does this go now? Storyline has advanced because, as I say, I'm toy with the idea. Do we go Triple H in Austin, or do we go Triple H in Steiner? Uh, I really don't know. I'm still in the works with that at this moment in time. We start off with a terrible match. Mark Henry beats Maven 442 by pinfall, just dominates D44. Teddy Long, good, some, uh, good work at ringside. A lack of psychology in this match. It did crow, uh, kill the crowd a little. Maven with 33 to Mark Henry's 46. I say Mark Henry will be a massive work in progress here. But he improves in performance skills. Both men, poor psychology. Negative crowd reaction for Maven. And this was a storytelling match of the night. So that's out of the way. And hopefully the show can only get better. Teddy Long then just basically hypes up the fact that, you know, Mark Henry took out Kane last week. And he's promising, you know, when this match does happen, Kane's not got a chance. And he's going to get welcomed and a Mark Henry's Hall of Pain. So D plus 50 advances the storyline, losing a little bit of heat. Next up was an extremely short match in the women's division, which saw Trish Stratus defeat Ivory in 436 with a chick kick. C minus 57 is pretty decent, builds up a bit more momentum for Trish. Ivory's pretty much putting people over at this point, but she's a great veteran to have. No skill improvements, just a few negatives there, including Ivory's declining physical ability. But we've already had Austin return and also come back today is Jazz. So Jazz basically with Trish celebrating comes down, beats Trish Stratus up to make a statement. So if I'm right in saying the women's match at Mania was Trish, Jazz and Victoria, likely we'll be going the same I would think um, unless we can get uh, someone out of nowhere I'd imagine it'll be the same but we do need to build up a, a proper women's division with a bit more depth. So C-57 for that. Next up, Eric Bischoff has declared that we will have a tag team match tonight, which will see the Dudleys take on Three Minute Warner, Jamal and Rosie. Of course, his lackeys, C-64. Bischoff was superb without a script and his performance was fantastic. It's just utilising Eric Bischoff a lot more. So that match will happen now. Decent match-up, which saw Three minute one and defeat the Dudleys in 7.35 when Jamal defeated Devon with a Simone Spike. Jamal was also the weak link in the match. C64. Rico doing some good work at ringside. The Dudleys with a far better performance, but 
I do want to push three minute warm into levels they never got to. As I say, when they were a team in real life, so that's the plan. The Dudleys, I think, can easily gain over this back at any point, so happy to do that. Match could have been a bit better. Admittedly, we did have to keep Devon strong because he was taking the pinfall. As you can see there, that's the negatives of the negative crowd reaction for both the three minute warning and also the booking decisions in this match. Next up, we just had the members of Evolution backstage just really talking to each other, just warming up for each other's matches tonight, which gets a B-75. Triple H improvising well, as did Flair. Orton was better here, Batista failed. But overall, it gets a bit more heat towards the members of Evolution, a bit more exposure for them, and it got the crowd a little bit hotter. And Evolution's match saw the team of Randy Orton and Batista defeat Spike Dudley in a hurricane in 7.45 when Batista defeated Spike with a Batista bomb. C-59, Flair does some good work at ringside, as you can see here. Such a long way to go with these two because the performance only just bettered that of the hurricane. So overall, decent. Batista improving performance skills and just a few negatives there. Inconsistencies. Low morale for Spike Dudley, Batista's psychology. Next up, we had Terry flirting with Randy Orton. That gets C62. Orton gets Perry's gimmick. Ric Flair helped Orton in this. There's a more long term thing with this, so I'm just going to leave it at that. I think you'll realise where we'll probably go with this in the future. Then, have a video hyping up the Man Beast Rhino. Good victory on his return at the pay per view at the Rumble when he beat Christian, so he's not booked on the show tonight. But a little hype video at C plus 69. Then we have a decent matchup that sees Lance Storm defeat Goldust in 842 with the single leg Boston Crab, C plus 70. Storm with a better performance here. The tag team storyline advances and gains heat, but as I said a few times, I do intend to really try and push Lance Storm because he's an absolutely dynamite worker. A uh, few negatives there, but uh, if I just Lance Storm's poor momentum, but overall, yeah, good win for Storm. Quick promo from Christian and Y2J, that's really just them getting the crowd hotter, but at the same time, just pissed off that they're not in the show. As I say, they're constantly being screwed over and wanting this to change. That's a, a B plus 85. It's just trying to find a place for them at this moment in time. Um, if I had an IC title, the two RVD would all be in there, but it's just fixing stuff until we get there. And the other singles match was about the great wrestling and good heat. We saw Booker T defeat William Regal in 11.35 with a scissors kick, a B80, Booker win 84, Regal with a 71, the storyline advances gaining heat, so I do plan to do something between Booker T and Goldust and Regal and Storm. Each team has traded singles victories this evening. We then have a little confrontation backstage between Steiner and Austin. Steiner are basically saying, you know, who do you think you are just coming back out of nowhere and thinking, you know, you can just step in front of me and try to win this title. So a bit of tension there. A92 and the storyline continues gaining some heat. Which leads to our main event match tonight. It was exceptional. And it was a team of Scott Steiner who teamed with Shawn Michaels. Take on Triple H and Ric Flair. Michaels and Steiner win in 1804 when Michaels defeats Flair with the sweet chair music. Following a distraction from Austin to Triple H. Very good B plus 85. The weak link was Ric Flair, obviously because of the age decline. But great performances from HBK and Triple H. Steiner was good with an 80. Uh, Flair with a 70. Storyline advances, which is good to see. And yeah, uh, a bit disappointed that it was penalised due to a lack of a, a associated hot storyline. But the storyline would be pretty decent, but hey, maybe that could have been an, an A if we were lucky. But still, a good match. And we end the show again. Austin doesn't feel very happy with what Steiner said, so he comes just into the ring and stunners Steiner to end the show, let the crowd be happy, and to get us a cheeky A90 rating to finish the show. Storyline advances, gains some heat, so it gives us options going forward, and overall, a B plus 85, which gives us a popularity increase within the 20 regions that we broadcast on. Pretty solid. Show, as I say, it's a stacked roster. It's just try to fit in your lower card, but we can't push everybody 
which means, you know, it's, it's just trying to find the right place for Christian, for Jericho, RVD, and that's us missing Kane as well. So, overall, a good show. It gives us options for the main event. And as I say, our, our upper mid cards have done the tag, tag division effectively. But I do feel we will eventually get a, an IC title. I don't know if I'm going to bring that in, same with the US title, whether that be at WrestleMania or possibly after WrestleMania. Because I know WWE was just after it when they done the Battle Royal, but Christian won. So looking for a year, TNA signed Jack Evans, Evan Courageous, um, Eddie Cologne has won a belt as well. But yeah, show was getting great reviews, that's good to see. Drug tests for 11k, that's fine. Um, no, sorry, I tell a lie, 11k for Heat, 17k for Raw. So we do spend a lot of money in drug testing, but as what it is, if it keeps the company clean, that's good. Rick Flair doesn't like test, he says he doesn't get it, but the rating was an 18.95. What I'd like to quickly check, if I just quickly go to top 100, that's not going to give us best buys, that's a liar, I just need to click on my character, user stats, not our best show, our best shows are 19, 16, but considering we've only just started, that's some pretty decent results so far. So that's it with Raw. And so if you guys have got any predictions on how you think No Way Out will look from a Raw side of view, you know, do we go Triple H v Steiner, do we go Triple H Austin, Triple Threat, do we have Austin in as a special referee? Let me know what you guys think, uh, let me know what you think of the tag division as well. Uh, any likes, comments, subscriptions are always deeply appreciated. Any retweets or any you want to discuss, just even tweet me on Twitter at Twitter Maxwell as well. And yeah, there'll be a button on the screen to let you subscribe if you haven't already, and a playlist of all the previous episodes in the series. But if you want to check out other stuff, we've got WWE Save going, and also TNA as well. So cheers for watching, guys. Much appreciated. Hopefully see you next time. Or SmackDown. Bye-bye.